The two most important days of your life are the day you are born and the day you figure out why. It took me 30 years to figure out why, and it didn't happen overnight. It was a journey that involved a leap of faith and a lot of courage to overcome my doubts and fears. The journey started when I became a parent. It was like a juggling act with one too many balls to manage. Being a working mum in an unfulfilling job, it started to get very hard. I had no time for hobbies anymore, no time for myself. When my son was nine months old, I was diagnosed with postnatal depression. Confronting depression was one of the hardest moments in my life. It was like I had the weight of the world on my shoulders and everything was falling apart. It was like erasing a portrait I had spent a lifetime creating only to start all over again. I felt lost, alone and a failure. Hitting rock bottom was the moment I realized I couldn't stay there anymore. And the only person to get me out was me. So I plucked up a lot of courage and decided to go on a journey, to take a leap of faith, to find myself, my dreams, and my passion. There were a few key moments along the way that helped me to see things differently. The first, I like to call the chair. I decided I needed to get some help, so I went to the doctors. As I walked in, I put my coat on the back of the chair, folded neatly, and I sat down, perched on the edge of my seat. The doctor said to me, the chair is not there for you. Actually, she said, the chair is not there for your coat. I apologized profusely in true English style, of course, <laughs> and I put it on my lap. No, the chair is there for you, she says. I'm a bit confused thinking, what is the big deal here? <laughs> she then says to me, if that's the way you've been living your life, I am not surprised you're here. That was the moment I realized I had spent 30 years living on the edge of my seat and not taking my place in the world. The next step was about reconnecting to my passion, painting. Before I was a mother, I used to paint as a hobby. I loved it. I was a self-taught artist. The day I picked up a paintbrush again was the moment I realized painting was a part of me I could no longer ignore. I had experienced this ignoring myself when at the age of 16 already, I told myself I was not going to go to art school and instead I was going to study something that would help me get a real job. The day I realized I couldn't do that any longer, I painted this painting, which I named Fragile. My third wake up call was about believing in the realms of possibility. Having coffee with a friend who had successfully um, quit her job to follow her dreams inspired me and I wrote a business plan on the back of a napkin. And that was the moment that impossible became I'm possible. It wasn't easy. Taking a leap of faith to set up my business as an artist, my doubts were playing games with my mind. You're not a real artist. You don't know how to teach people to paint. Now. 
is not a good time. For the first time in my life, I decided to listen to my heart instead of my head and boldly walk beyond my fears. To do that, I had to let go of the need for security and approval. The journey was a bumpy one. Cash flow was often an issue. In the first year, I sold my car for cash. The good news is I had great legs because I was cycling everywhere. <laughs> Second year comes around, and I had just read Seth Godin's Purple Cow, and it got me thinking, what could I do that would be considered remarkable? So I decided I would paint 100 faces in a year and to unite people using art. That was the birth of the 100 Faces project. And at the same time, I solved cash flow problems because I sold the places in the project up front to people who wanted to belong, ambassadors of the 100 Faces project. I knew the project would be a challenge. It was slightly crazy even by my standards. <laughs> I mean, what artist, seriously, what artist is going to decide to paint under so much pressure 100 people and confront that amount of people with an artist's vision of themselves? Let's just say there were a few facelifts and nose jobs involved. <laughs> Two months before the exhibition deadline, finishing the project on time did not look possible. Humanly impossible, in fact. The venue was booked and the media were informed and there was no, no chance to change the date. So failing did not feel like an option for me. But guess what? I made it. Thanks to a lot of sleepless nights, and a lot of perseverance. The 100 Faces project was made. The year I launched my business, I signed up for a firewalking experience to push my boundaries again. I had no idea how I was going to do it. All I knew is that people have been doing that for thousands of years before me, so why can't I? I'll never forget it. The feeling of trust, focus, and momentum, it was amazing. And that got me thinking. How could I inspire people using art? How could I awaken people with art? So I decided to fuse my HR background with my passion for art and facilitation. And now today, you probably saw myself and Uli running the art activity this morning. We are running art activities and team buildings, which we call collaborative art, all around the world. You can imagine that when we ask people to paint a symbolic masterpiece of a shared vision in a limited amount of time, we see a lot of skeptical faces. The reason that is, is because we heard this so much this morning, but most people don't believe they can draw or paint. And what is magic for us is seeing that doubt transform into pride. Here are some examples of the collaborative art and the visions that teams are having together around the world. For TEDx, we wanted to offer you an art activity that would engage you all around the theme of momentum. Your mission was to doodle a giant portrait of Amelia Earhart. 
the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic. I hope that today inspires you to give momentum to your dreams, whether that be learning to play the guitar or climbing Mount Everest. The most effective way to do it, as Amelia Earhart says, is to do it. And this is what you all did today. <laughs> so, are you ready to see your creation? <laughs> Here's Amelia. <laughs> well done to you. Thank you. <laughs>